Hello, my name is Tammy, also known as Plays Well With Paper, and this is my YouTube channel. I haven't done very much with it. I just use it kind of as a resource for me to make some short videos that I put on my blog to go along with my photo step out tutorials. But I've decided that I really wanna focus on this channel and start to grow it a little more as far as being more of a resource for people who are who learn visually. And so I figured I would start with an intro as to who I am and where I plan to go with this channel. So let's get started with that. I am a middle-aged woman. I'm a Christian. I'm a wife. I'm a daughter. I am a servant to six cats. I'm a teacher. And then in my spare time, I like to do crafting. How did I get started in crafting? Well, it goes back to my family. My Nana, my mom's grandmother, my great grandmother was very crafty. She could do all kinds of things. She quilted, she crocheted, she made things out of resin, she made things out of metal. She was amazing. And so she passed the craftiness down through the generations and my mom often would make things with us as children. So we just grew up always being you know, kind of crafty people. But when I was in elementary school, I joined a club that you may be familiar with called 4-H. And 4-H is often uh, young people raise animals that they sell at the fair. But I wasn't involved in that part of it. What I did was I took the cooking, the beginning cooking classes, and then I took beginning sewing. So I learned how to sew a stitch. I can sew a seam and do some basics. Uh, I'm not a seamstress at all but I learned the basics. And then one year I took a class on needlework and cross stitch. And for the whole year, I learned all kinds of things about how to do needlepoint and then counted cross stitch and how to frame it. And I really enjoyed it. I had such a great time with that learning that my mom decided she wanted to learn. So we enjoyed it so much that they ended up purchasing a store and they turned it into a needlework and craft store. We lived in a very small central California town. And in fact, it was so small, we didn't even have a stoplight. Uh, we had no fast food restaurants or anything like that in our town, but we had our craft store and we had people from all over that would come to our craft store to purchase things. So I learned a lot about the crafting industry during that time, and it was also uh, the end of my high school career and the first few years of college when I was doing community college and still living at home. So I really got the opportunity to learn from people in the needlework and hobby industry at the time. I also got to take classes and I was able to then go back to the store and teach. And so that was a wonderful foundation. Uh, then I went on to college and I ended up taking some of that that I had learned and I turned it into uh, my teaching credential. So I became a teacher. I have a secondary teaching credential. And so secondary means that I can teach uh, junior high and high school. I have a credential for junior high and high school, but uh, I left teaching in the public school after about 15 years, and I now teach for a, a company, a water agency here in my town, and I teach students kindergarten through 12th grade uh, about water issues, water conservation, and things like that. So, clear going back to even the craftiness uh, of, you know, the things I learned from crafting actually uh, prepared me for what I do for my a job and, and how I make a living. Uh, I'm sure you can imagine the load of work that comes with being a secondary teacher when you have sometimes 175 or more students that it can be very difficult and overwhelming. And so of course my craftiness and my enjoyment of creative arts had gone by the wayside and I was really just only working. And I decided at one point that I just needed a creative outlet. And so I started scrapbooking. It was very new to me. I hadn't done it before, really. And so 
I started taking classes at local scrapbook stores and then soon I ended up on the design team for one of them and then I started teaching classes for them and I just really enjoyed the interaction. I enjoyed the, uh, the the inspiration that I got from the students, that they got from me. And I also really enjoyed the opportunities that I got to go to CHA, which is now Creativation, and to meet industry professionals and to get to see uh, some things firsthand. And so just as, uh, as a hobby, I, I, again, was kind of back into that teaching mode uh, like I was when I was back home uh, with our store, and I just really enjoyed that aspect of it. But sadly, uh, my scrapbook store closed uh, several years ago, and so uh, that just left me with just enjoying creating for myself. I didn't have any... Uh, restrictions or anything like that I could just create and do what I wanted to do and uh, so that's what led me to plays well with paper and what I do today paper crafting is my hobby um, you know when I started this video I explained that I am first and foremost a Christian a child of God I am a wife I have my kitties, I have my parents, uh, you know, these are my priorities. And then I have my job, which is teaching. So those things all come first. And the crafting and the hobbies and all of this is just something that I do in my spare time. I am not a professional paper crafter. I am not a professional in the industry. Um, I'm just a girl in her studio who likes to make stuff. And so I like to share it just like most of us do. And that's what this channel is going to be for. Just me sharing stuff that I make. And sometimes it will be for a designer, um, you know, or a, a brand or a company. But a lot of times it's just something that I enjoy and I want to share on here with you. And I hope that you will enjoy it too. Another thing I often get asked is where do you get your inspiration? Well, that can be so many places. Oftentimes it can be as simple as I'm flipping through my Instagram account and I will see uh, an image or I will see a bit of a video from someone like Tim Holtz or Jennifer McGuire or some of you incredibly creative, amazing people that I follow. And I'll think, hey, that's that's a great idea. I think I could use that with this die or I think I could use that with this stamp or something like that. More often than not, if you've been following me at all, you will know that I get a great deal of inspiration from Disney. Disney parks, Disney history, rides, things like that. And especially uh, after not being able to be in Disneyland for over a year, I'm really missing it. So I'm drawing on my inspiration from that a lot recently. But I also find a lot of inspiration in things that I learn. I love to learn about things. I love to read about things. I love to watch uh, documentaries about things and just learn about people's lives, learn about uh, historical events, uh, all kinds of things like that. So even, you know, other cultures, other countries. And, and so I draw on on that kind of thing for inspiration. And then I have had the incredible opportunity in my lifetime to get to travel to 17 different countries. Um, sometimes I was only there for just a very short time. Other times like uh, I was able to live in Kenya for a year. Uh, so, you know, it varies. That was the longest I was uh, out of the United States, but uh, I have gotten to travel a lot and see so many different cultures and meet so many amazing people. And so I do draw on that many times for some of my inspiration, um, as well as even just my upbringing. Sometimes I have made some things just based on, you know, things from my family and memories, uh, things like that. So those are most of the ways that I find inspiration when I'm creating. And a lot of times it will just happen when I'm sitting looking at something and it will just spark a memory or it will make me think of something and I'll kind of go off on that. Um, 
And one last place often that I do find a lot of inspiration to is Pinterest, uh, in the sense that I will see something and I'll think, oh, you know what, that reminds me of, and then I'll do a search for, you know, mid-century modern Christmas or, you know, something like that to kind of, to help me uh, understand a genre or uh, a time period uh, and to kind of get me started and going in the right direction. So those are some of the places that I find uh, t that I get the most inspiration. Well, I think that covers the basics of who I am, how I got started, and why I'm here, and where we're going to go from here. So I'm looking forward to just sharing some of my creative processes, some of my projects, some of my ideas, and some of my inspirations with you on Place Well with Paper, and I hope you'll join me.